Elmo Creek. Oh, what a load of work that was. That's the first 10 410 watt Trina solar panels that we picked up, so at least there wasn't 20 to move. Uh, anyways, we got them tucked away in the garage for now, and next time we bring the utility trailer down, we'll load them up on that. We kept the plywood and the pallet and everything, so we can just restrap them back on like they were to protect them. I uh, felt bad for that delivery driver. The pallet was longer than the lift gate, and all he had was a pallet jack that was a little short, so he was hoping there was a forklift here, but almost 800 pounds of solar panels was not easy to move around especially with just a little pallet jack so maneuvered around as you saw and got it out of there and michelle and i unloaded it and we're good to go so now it's down to getting them installed all right the last piece is uh, getting all the panels up there so as you saw earlier they've all shown up there's 10 410 watt panels here these are from trina uh, they are really good panels so i'm excited to get those installed we'll probably be putting a few of them up on the fire pit cover i need to do a load check on that it's built for snow load so it can take quite a bit of weight so i'll probably end up putting four of them on that and the remaining six on the cabin itself but if i get the four up that can get us the batteries up there and get things going combined with the wind so uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that here pretty soon so next time we get the utility trailer down i'm gonna throw these guys on and haul them up and then we'll take the batteries uh, as soon as that's ready the logistics truck that's carrying the batteries for the solar wind power system is just about to arrive here at the house so i'm waiting for that guy to pull up so i can have him unload that pallet uh probably an eight nine hundred pound pallet i would guess it's 120 pounds each per battery times six somewhere in there uh, he's gonna unload that and then we'll stash those in the garage until we can throw them on the utility trailer with the solar panels that came in and haul them up to the property and start installing that stuff so pretty excited Just took delivery of the uh, batteries for the solar wind turbine system. So we're gonna unpallet those and get them in the garage. Uh, they look great. So we'll unbox them and I'll show you some video of that as we take them out so you can see what they are. Hundred thirty-seven pounds each. Whew. These packaged but there's probably not a lot of heavy packaging there. So we don't plan on hauling these up for a little while to, to get them installed. We want to get the panels up there. So what I'm going to do is actually connect them here to a charger so they stay topped off and charged so they don't sit and have problems over time. These are 12 volt, 200 amp hour Renogy batteries. Uh, they're AGM lead acid batteries. So we did not go with lithium because this is a small enough project and lithium batteries are really expensive. Uh, also, there's other issues with lithiums that you have to take into account, which I don't want to do right now. Um, while it's not common, lithium batteries can explode, but um, that's not a reason not to buy them. Uh, however, the thing you need to do is prepare for that, right? So if you have tons and tons of lithium batteries, they really should be in their own area. Uh, I know some people that put them in storage containers separate from their house. Um, I would not store a giant solar array worth of batteries of lithium in my house uh, or in my cabin for sure. So. Uh, that needs to be taken into account. Uh, also, they are really, really expensive. And this is a small system. It's five kilowatts. Uh, it's the right size for what we're doing now. So I think lead acid will work just perfect. They're a little safer. These are sealed AGMs. 
So that should do a pretty good job. Uh, we're gonna do 24 volts, so we'll be putting two of these in series and then three sets in parallel, so there's six batteries. Our garage is very full. Uh, the Jeep always lives in here, uh, especially during the winter when we're not driving it. Um, you know, with the soft top, I like to keep it in good shape. So uh, anyways, garage is full up, so I did make a space here where I'm gonna put the batteries to keep them charged, it's out of the way. Um, especially because they're exposed. I don't want anything falling on them and shorting them out, so. Wow, these sad handles. So, you can see how big they are and heavy as I drag it through the garage. They have these nice handles, like most big batteries do. Uh, so, I'm gonna set these on top of something instead of on the concrete, because uh, concrete is terrible on especially plastic things. Um, so I'm going to go grab some wood or pallet that we can set these on, and then I'll move the rest of them. Actually, better yet, the foam that was in the bottom of the box, because it's the right size for each battery. So, let's use that. I uh, got my Fluke digital meter here. Uh, this is awesome. I've had this one for probably 20 years and it still works awesome. By Fluke. It's like steel, you know, buy the best and it lasts forever. Uh, anyways, I'm going to take this Fluke, uh, measure the voltage on all these, make sure it's good, um, and then we'll get them started charging. All right, a good 12.8-ish volts on all of them, so that's what I expected to see. So now let's get them wired up so we can charge them. Handy, I already had a bunch of jumpers built. Uh, I used to have a bunch of old UPS batteries from a data center that ran my ham radio station in the house here down the basement. So if the power went out, uh, the batteries could run the ham uh, gear, uh, which is great for emergencies. Uh, those batteries have since been replaced, and uh, I did the batteries that are on there are much bigger now, so they don't need all these jumpers. So I'm going to reuse these. Woohoo! So I decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wire uh, two in parallel uh, for charging. So I'll wire these two together, next two together, next two together. Uh, I'll put a charger on the first two and the second two, because I have two chargers, uh, and let them sit for a while till they're fully charged up to max. Um, I don't know what they're at. The, like I said, the factory figure they're probably 60-ish percent. So we'll get them fully charged up. When those chargers are happy and say they're good to go, I'll move one down to the end. Uh, and then when all said and done, I will actually wire three in parallel and three in parallel and let each charger just sit there as a trickle charger for now. So should work good. All right, I hope you can hear me over my furnace because it decided to heat the house right now. So, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, all right, I'm gonna reuse these jumpers. I had to drill them out because of course the bolts were just a tiny bit too big for the existing hole. So uh, I just grabbed a drill bit, ran it through all of them. So they're the right size now, so we can hook them up. So we're doing parallel batteries, which means positive to positive, negative to negative. If we were doing series batteries, which we will when we actually hook these up to run them for real, uh, you would actually go negative to positive, which sounds scary, but that works. So in this case, I'm going to hook the two positives together and separately hook the two negatives together. Then I can put a charger across them and charge them both simultaneously. Now across the negative on this one and the positive on this one, I should still see the 12.8 volts. If I don't, I did something wrong. 12.81, perfect. One of the common mistakes people make when they're hooking batteries in parallel, uh, you, you know, you're you connecting positive to positive, negative to negative, you got them in parallel. When you're putting a load on or you're charging or pulling power off, you never wanna just pull from one battery. So you don't wanna put your load across just this battery. What you want to do is put the load across the whole bank. So you put positive on one battery, and on the end of the bank, whether there's two or three, put the negative. By doing that, you're allowing equal power draw and charging across all the batteries at the same time. Otherwise, all the power is going here, then here, then here, and over time, these batteries will have more and more trouble getting charged properly. There's an excellent article, uh, if you go out to Victron Energy's website, uh, I'll put a link down there to the PDF, there is an awesome PDF on everything you need to know about batteries, uh, how they work, how to best wire them, how to best charge them, 
Uh, it's really fascinating. I mean, I've been in power at, at electronics my whole life, but that article was awesome. I learned a whole bunch of stuff in that. So I will link that below and you should go read it. So this charger automatically detects the battery type, whether it's AGM or whatever type you have. Uh, and then you can set it to 12 or six volt. It'd be awesome if it did 24 volt, but it does not, so we're doing 12 volt. Uh, so I just powered it up. You can see already it's starting to put power in. Uh, you should see the voltage climbing here uh, as it starts to put power into these two batteries. At some point, this thing will go green and happy and say like, hey, those batteries are as full as I can get them. At that point, we'll charge the next set and then the next set, and then I will wire them together to trickle charge them as I talked about earlier. So as you can see, the charger now is all green and pulsing super duper slowly, which means it's done doing its genius charging and topping off these first pair here. So let's move it over to the next pair and get those topped off. So we got all the batteries topped off. They are uh, all at 100% full capacity. The charger went into its uh, safe trickle mode to keep them topped off on each pair. So they weren't as bad as the manufacturer said they might be. He, uh, they said they might be as low as 60%, but they weren't anywhere near that. They were pretty full, so that's awesome. So they are all topped up in pairs. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually gonna wire them into three parallel and then three parallel and put a different charger on each one. So that'll put a trickle charger on these three and then a trickle charger on those three. Uh, I did not wanna go six in parallel. You can, you should be careful how many batteries you put in parallel, but also in parallel, if one battery has a problem or gets damaged, it can cause problems with the other battery. So I'm minimizing, since they're just gonna sit here and trickle charge, I'm minimizing uh, that risk. So these three are already wired. As you can see, I've got them all in parallel and they're on one charger already. I need to build two more cables that I didn't have. So I got all the parts, gonna build two more cables so I can jumper the third one in over there. And then we'll put the other NOCO 10 amp charger on it and we'll be good to go until we're ready to get them up to put them on the solar system. You want to be really careful when doing this because you don't want to accidentally have these loose ends while you're tightening somewhere flop around and hit a positive because you'll short the whole bank out and that would be really ugly. So you have to really pay attention to what you're doing and go slow. Watch all the ends as you connect them. Also good to use tools with rubber over the handles because if this fell across the uh, posts it can short them out so I usually try to use rubber covered handles just to help reduce that problem so there we go those three are in parallel now so let's get a charger hooked up to them and they'll be good to go All right, good to go. Three in parallel, three in parallel. Running the NOCO chargers, one on each side. These can sit here for a long time now while we uh, get everything mounted and ready to go on the uh, panel side and the wind side. Once those are up, then we'll haul the batteries up and hook them up for reels. These batteries are from Renogy. They are 200 amp hours each at 12 volts. So in theory, there could be 1200 amp hours of yumminess here uh, if you ran them all in parallel. Uh, we're not gonna be doing that. We're running it 24 volts in the final system so we'll actually get 600 amp hours which is still awesome um, so they're pretty heavy they're about 130 pounds but we'll be able to lay them all six this way or probably three and three on a shelf uh, once I get the space figured out we'll build something for that so these two in series to make 24 volts the next two will be in series to make 24 volts the third set will be in series to make 24 volts then we'll run all those banks in parallel into the uh, charging system